Greetings, everyone. Welcome to THL's Heart Center. I am one of our hosts, Lotus Knight, and I am joined by a great crew to comment the semi-final week of the season. Starting to my left, we have Super Chicken. Chicken, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks. And to my right, we have um, not a daily Akari. The name is wrong. It is Geranium Battle. Geranium, how are you? I'm doing very well. Uh, glad to be back after my week, two weeks off. Always great having you. Below Geranium, we have the one and only board member, Ron Mexico. Ron, how are you? Doing great. Disappointed Geranium didn't make it three weeks off, but it's fine. Here we are. Uh, excited to talk some THL stuff and, uh, and what happened over the last few weeks. For sure. And we also have our other regular host, Neji Boston, is here tonight. How are you, Neji? Doing good. Excited to talk about some playoffs. And finally, we have our special guest for tonight. Diamond is here. Diamond, how are you? I'm good. It's been so long. I'm happy to be back. Yes, it has. I am glad to have you back. As always, we have so much to talk about this show. We're going to go over what happened in the last week of Hero, um, Pro, and Legacy. And as we prepare for that, we do have a special announcement tonight. And I thought Ron Mexico, board member Ron Mexico, could tell us what is the special announcement for tonight, Ron? Absolutely. So special announcement to all of you who are currently in playoffs uh, as THL wraps up uh, its various series. We uh, see that there's going to be a nerf that is coming in the very near future. We've got a balance patch uh, coming out on Thursday. And in light of that, the weeks will be extended. So uh, the current playoff week that is underway will be uh, now something that has two weeks uh, to be played. So not anything too different from what I'm sure a lot of you were already expecting. It's pretty standard for what we do. Uh, when there is a patch announced, so you have a little bit of extra time to schedule and play and prepare. For sure. So um, as... We say this patch. I want to ask you, Ron, do you think this patch is actually major enough? I want to open this discussion for everyone, but I'll start with Ron and then just feel free to say whatever you all think. Um, do you think this is a major patch that actually will change decks? Well, it's kind of impossible to say because we don't know exactly what the change is going to be. Um, all we know is that you know, for relevant standard cards, we've got Null is is getting changed and the Death Knight location is getting changed. And Death Knight location is dramatically warping the meta, so it's something that needs to happen uh, and needs to get changed. But whether that's, you know, a little bit less stats on the Rusher or less charges on the location or a more expensive location, um, we won't really be able to assess it until after we see what exactly is getting changed. Um, I. I have my doubts that it's going to be sufficient enough to hold back the strength of the latest Death Knight deck that's been everywhere. But again, I don't know what they're going to change yet. So we'll see. For sure. Um, I'll ask some of you to hop in with this. Neji, do you think it's a lot is going to change? Um, I mean, they announced that there's going to be two changes for standard. And depending what they do to them, um, I think it could make an impact. But they need to make the correct changes and not just lightly touch the two cards. They need to <laughs> delete them. That's fair. Um, Chicken, with that in mind, what changes would you make? Um, yeah, like, so obviously we know the location is getting hit based on the 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 graphic that was posted today. Um, and it seems like, uh, yeah, it definitely, I think it's probably just either the stats or the, the mana cost. Like, the, the amount of charges, I think, is less relevant because I think usually 
the first charge of the location is what really kind of blows the game open in the early game. Uh, especially that after curving egg on turn one into like pointing the location. So reducing the attack power or reducing the health on the on the 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 summon minion would probably be uh the most impactful change. But yeah, I don't know. It's so it's it does seem pretty tough to tough to evaluate with like so many different changes that you could make. Um be it between like the mana cost or the the stats or even even the amount of charges though I think that would be the least impactful. But yeah, it is it is such a crazy card, so it's hard for me to tell like how much of a change is needed because like people are playing it in like forty card blood death knight, and it's just like it's also just correct like you should be doing it, uh, but it's just that good. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's the like best the... card in forty card blood DK. Yeah, it's <laughs> absurd. Um, keeping into mind that Goldshire no is also being nerfed though, Draenian, how would you change no? Oh, I mean, I think that the most likely change to Null is going to be a mana change to Null. It's going to be an increase uh, to 11 mana um, because there isn't any other change to any other Evolve Shaman cards. Um, and sort of Null is like the face of, the, uh, of going fast in that deck. Uh, if they change Null to lower stats or something like that, that's not actually going to change the performance level of the of the um, possibly most degenerate deck, high roll wise at least. Um, so, yeah, Null to eleven mana will definitely kill a lot of the momentum of the uh, of the evolves. They can no longer easily evolve into a ten drop. Um, that being said, with uh, going back to your original question, I think if Evolve Shaman takes a big hit like that, that does open the metagame a lot, even if Death Knight doesn't change that much, just because there's a lot of decks that uh, Evolve Shaman was holding back. Fair, fair. Um, and finally... Diamond, anything you want to add that you think will change, that you think is interesting? Yeah, I mean, it's I, I'm glad they're changing the DK location particularly, because that's been annoying. I think it would, if they change it to even, like, transform into, like, whatever stats, so they can't do egg coin location, cuts <laughs> a bit too many stats instead of, like, maybe just having a 4 or 5 or 3, 4, whatever. And then, yeah, I think the null change also makes sense, because it's the Smallest change you can do without like destroying all of all shaman stuff, but you just get rid of this early get scams that you can do. I think in general people will enjoy the game more because of that. And maybe there will be some more stuff that comes out, but because like questroids come out to try to beat DK right now, so maybe more stuff will come out if DK is still on top. That's fair. Um, now let's take a look at. The matches that happened this week. We don't have as many because there were only six matches in the series we cover. We're going to hop straight into here. Where for the first match, Diamond is actually going to be telling us how the late bloomers facing F2L Obsidian went. Sure. Yeah, this was a pretty interesting set of matches because it was all over in a couple of hours. So I think the first match was Pokemon on stream versus Dragon Rider. And I think Pokemon said on stream, he was like, yeah, I don't know what else is happening. So uh, what's going on? But then I'm pretty sure it was G-Kick played. And then I got home from work and I was like, oh, how is the team doing? I'm like, oh, we were up eight to two. And then I played my set with Itachi and then we won. So I, I guess there's not much else to say. I think I was very surprised Itachi didn't bring Shaman in hero i think shaman's pretty good in hero and the two people on their team that didn't bring shaman lost so i don't know about that and i also just like on the late bloomer team we had a lot of 
synergies, I guess, like same brings. Like me and Justin had same classes, the same with Pokemon and Tab. And I don't, I don't think there's so much to say from like an insider's perspective. Everything's like out there in the open. Okay. Um, I will ask Nancy if he has anything he wants to share about this one. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I mean, pretty quick win for late bloomers here. I was expecting late bloomers to win this. I think I had late bloomers versus clowns as my prediction for the finals. So I'm not too surprised. Um, but yeah, quick win by late bloomers sends them to the finals. Nice work. And, uh, yeah, we'll see them this week. Yeah, everyone on stream last week predicted uh, late bloomers versus clowns. It was a uh, it was preordained though. Um, we should have we should have known better because every season uh, it always has to be an APM team and always just in time in the final, uh, which has happened once again in Hero. That is true. Max. Any further thoughts about this match before we talk about our other hero match? Um, I would like to bring it up just because, um, unfortunately, uh, Base Dink and Dragon Rider, you can see, did not bring DK. Uh, I don't know if this is the case for other series, but in Hero, uh, for whatever reason, on the on the teams that um, did not play. We, you know, that had a buy. Unfortunately, there were some uh, rollovers, so that's why you see DK missing from some of these lineups is because they're back from before the mini set, um, and it's just an unfortunate thing that happens. Um, I think I think Dragon Rider uh, got a win with Paladin, so I mean, like, you know, Paladin not a very represented class, but still getting a win. We'll see another one in a bit where. The underrepresented class also got a win, so it's not like terrible, terrible, but it is you know a kind of a maybe a mental thing as well. I don't know. For sure. Um, anything else anyone wants to share about this match? Okay, so let's move on to our other match that we're looking at for Hero Series. We have abusing PR management facing the Ice Crown Citadel, and Geranium is going to tell us what happened for that one. Okay, uh, so as uh, this is a, a basically a mini rematch of last Hero Series Finals, um, where the APM team versus Clowns, uh, the it actually the the same seeds one for APM uh, both times. So the first seed, fourth seed, fifth seed, won both times. Uh, last time Wild Knight didn't play, this time he made sure to lose, I guess. I don't know. Um, but it went Molestar first against Neji Boston, got a uh, game four win. Uh, some very clutch wins with Warrior again. Uh, Wild Nine played second and lost to Marty B. Um, I think he blames his Q order more than anything. Uh, then my curse and Probiwan, who uh, is a emergency sub for Canoe, uh, it's the second E sub in two weeks. Um, both of them played at basically the same time, and uh, we got the result that my curse had won uh, fairly early on. But my curse started playing a little bit before, and then Probiwan took like an hour to get that uh, that three to two win. And uh, saved me from having to face our hat. Fair. Um, had a still a quick win. We don't expect to see that many matches over this early in semis. Um, Ron, anything you want to share here? Uh, yeah. I mean, again, it's just preordained, you know. Uh, one team was named APM. On the other side, you had a, a Justin team that was on their way to the finals. So um, there's nothing really that Ice Clown Citadel could have done because uh, this is this is how Hero is scripted. Uh, so I would say just blame the script writers, honestly. Um, 
But uh, I, I remember also having the misfortune of having to play against Molestar uh, and playing Warrior. And it was what knocked my team out of the playoffs. So uh, he's he's on his way um, to, uh, <laughs> to a title here, um, if APM can pull it off. Although they are facing Justin, which I think means, you know, what we all already know, that uh, Late Bloomers is going to win. But good job to Mike Hurst and Proby1 for, for getting those victories, uh, sparing the geranium versus hat showdown and now we're just we're set up for what everyone's been waiting for can apm get this victory without always just in time should be exciting we, we know the answer it's no but you know it'll be interesting to watch <laughs> oh man oh, yeah. uh Mo- molestar brought uh oh everyone knows that molestar plays thief rogue and control warrior good thing neji brought ping mage to to counter these decks oh Oh wait, he did not. <laughs> wait, where is I'll the mage? You now. <laughs> where is the mage? Everyone is asking this. I'll have you know. It was it was brought in the other Priest three. Priest was better, I swear. Yeah, it's surely. Yeah, I had some unfortunate games. Very unfortunate. It was turn nine, and I had not played a two, three, or four drop as my quest priest. It was great. Or turn eight. What to do? Yeah, the problem with this meta is that there are three good classes and then uh, seven other classes. Wow. Wait, what's the third? Uh, but you have you have to bring the three good classes. What uh, the third, third one is the third one. I think is I would say it's certainly mage, um, mainly because it beats shaman pretty easily, or not super easily. There's like the turn two three high rolls that are tough to beat, but you can also could, there are also like techs for that. Um, and also bringing, like, yeah, bringing mage just kind of like punished a lot of the, like the slow decks that a lot of people other, or a lot of other people could bring. Um, and a certain <laughs> APM one seed really likes bringing slow decks. To be fair, chicken, I I did bring a mage against Molstar in the previous week, and I I dealt one hundred damage to Molstar in that mage game, but I still got swept. Neat. I counted. Yep. It was literally I mean, 100. He, he lived on three health and beat. Did you try to do like I did think three. that these were... I thought <laughs> oh, these were was, the four classes that, that he was, was going to bring. <laughs> hey, uh, Chicken, may I just say, you say there's only three good classes, seven bad ones. Every single class is in this match. Look at this. There's a uh, warrior, DH, druid, Hunter, Paladin. Let's just say that Hunter and Paladin should not have been there. And that <laughs> we had a win. small Hunter rollover. <laughs> Hunter got a win. And not having DK was an unfortunate scenario. I hey, we never... Uh, the three people that won for me did not ban DK. <laughs> Simple. That's fair. Wait, uh, actually... Wait, what? <laughs> I just yeah, noticed that. <laughs> I, I think for a mole it made sense because he had like uh, his own warrior, and then the, I, I know like people who play Thief Rogue a lot have said that they feel like the matchup uh, against Frost Death Knight is fairly even. Um, and I think like Fire Noodle was saying that he has a positive win rate against Frost Death Knight on ladder. So I think if you're bringing Thief Rogue and Control Warrior, it makes sense to leave it up. But I do think it is. It is still a bit risky because, like, the early game high rolls can just snowball pretty hard. That was a very oh, risky yeah. call. I, I think it makes sense for Pro B1 to not ban DK. That's about it. <laughs> I, I agree. So true. I tried. I tried to advise him to ban DK. It didn't work. Fair. So, post this match, I want to ask you all who wins? I'm going to do a fast round, so no justification. Just say the team you think wins, and we'll go for the next person. I'm going to start with Diamond. Late bloomers will win. And Geranium. AP up in finals, Justin wins. Um, and Ron. Late bloomers. Chicken. Um... Yeah, I'm not betting against Justin. <laughs> and Neji. I choose Justin. Okay. He so said, we, guys, guys, he said, said no, no justification. 
You're, you're literally in your few words saying a justification. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Justification. Open up. There it is. I'm coping so hard, Deji. What the fuck? So let's move to Legacy. Legacy, we have a few great matches to talk about. I think that is incorrect. I'm going to put the match for this week. But there's a lot to talk about in these two. And we're going to open by looking at um, the match. Oh, why Wait, surely we're not talking about this match again? again? Yeah. Guys, guys. guys. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was it was painful, painful. enough the you know, first you know, time. I heard, I heard about, about the story of Chicken and Five Game. <laughs> <laughs> what Please do not talk about the time I lost to Rebuff. Okay, <laughs> now I have the right one. So we're going to start by talking about Dead Legend versus Death to White. Ron, take us away. All right. Um, I did want to talk about Chicken losing to Rebuff, but I guess we'll talk about this one. So, uh, Dad Legend getting a victory here, eighteen to eleven over F Two L White. Uh, starting from the top because I don't know the order of the games that were played. Base Tank maintaining her undefeated season coming in as that huge super sub for Dad Legend gets a three to one victory over Robobson in the one. King Viking twenty three uh, loses to two star Mako in a five-game series in the two. Mako coming through huge uh, in Hero and Legacy this season. has been on fire. Uh, finishes with an 8-1 and one record, but not enough to get there because the rest of the team, they all went five games, uh, but they all went Dad Legend's way in the three, four, and five. Pescatarian taking it down over Myandadon. Yellow Dart getting the victory over Gimme Lamp. And Haster taking the victory over Totino's Pizza. Um, it was still a very tight series, you know, it could have easily gone either way, just just a few games different. But Dad Legend are going to be the ones punching their ticket to the finals. Yeah, this was quite a big result. Dad Legend, I don't even remember when's the last time Dad Legend won, and they're making Legacy Finals now. That's going to be a crazy week. Um, I want to ask Diamond for some thoughts here. Yeah, I think this is a big win for Dad Legend. And they, even though like it is close, it does look like a big blowout. I think interesting the Hunter by Haster in the five seed. And then, yeah, just a lot. I, I have not been really focusing on Lexi. DK, Mage, Priest, Shaman, very popular <laughs> as F2L brought it three times and Dad Legend brought it two times. But it'll be interesting. I don't know, it's weird to see like how they're winning so much in general, but their records are all like even or slightly or slightly even above or below. And then based is 4 0 as a super sub. So maybe based is doing some carrying and Dead Legends making it through. Uh, just so you know, the uh, the time that Dad Legend won Legacy was right before Foolish Mad Men. So quite a long time ago now. Season 16, it looks like. That is quite a while. So, any final thoughts anyone wants to share? Uh, the Gimme Lamp versus um uh, versus Yellow Dart match was played on stream. Uh, they brought some actually really uh fun decks. Um, there was like Wrath Spine Enchanter and Shaman, uh, to to cast fire. And frost spells from hand copies. It was a uh, pretty good time. Nice. Um, let's move on to our other match, though, because we had a stomping here. The Clown Stoners faced the standard THL Degenerates. And Neji, tell us about this one. All right. Uh, the Clown Stunners won 12 to 3 over STD. I uh, started off with myself winning 3 to 2 over Memnarch. was a very close match. I thought I had lost, and then I evolved into Thaddeus, and I didn't lose. Um, then we had Quaz subbing in for Canoe uh, and taking a 3 to 1 over Saku, and then wrapped it up with Rice Cryption taking a sweep over Pigpen. Uh, which was enough points uh, to seal the week. So Mole and Kodamora didn't have to play. 
Um, yeah, I mean, it looks one-sided. I know my series was very tight. The other ones don't look too tight. So pretty strong win from Clown Stoners. And we will see Clown Stoners versus Dad Legend in the finals. For sure. For sure. Um, now, I want to ask the thoughts here from Super Chicken. Chicken, anything you want to add here? Uh, yeah, I guess the, the trick to Niji not losing to Mole in playoffs is to put Mole on your team. Sure. Uh, yeah, that works pretty well, it, it would appear. I think, like, um, I don't know. I guess I would have expected both clown teams to make the finals because they have fairly similar, um, like, team compositions. But, yeah, having... Having Mole as your two seed is pretty good, even though he didn't have to play. Um, and I don't know. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's uh, it's just it's just your day, I suppose. And then <laughs> Neji and Rice decide to lose in Hero, and then decide to <laughs> like, oh, that kind of sucked. Let's win in Legacy, <laughs> and have now done that. Um, well, it's, it's kind of a prophecy. Strategic thing, Hero, tanking, though. actually. Yeah, I mean, it, it there was nothing just... they could do about it. It's APM versus Justin and Hero. That's just a thing. That just it happens. Is, it is true. They made the unfortunate <laughs> mistake in Hero of not having Justin on their team or being named APM. So you know they were always not going to make it to finals. Four seasons running. Four seasons running. But it's it's sixty percent of the title team from last season in Legacy, uh, in Clown Stoners that are in the finals again. So uh, my money's on them. Well, you can... Lotus will ask us who we're picking first. You can call it transcendent tea building. Thank you, Ron. Uh huh. Uh huh. I will ask that, but I want to ask you before if anyone has anything else they want to share about this match. So I'll take that as I know, as I, my question becomes which team wins? No explanation necessary. Just tell me is it Dead Legend or is it Clown Stoners? And I'm going to start with the biased ones. Let's start with Neji. The clouds will win, of course. And Geranium? Okay, here's the case that I'm going to make for Dad Legend winning. And it all is based on base in the one beating Neji, okay? Didn't understand the assignment at all. Mm -hmm. I'm Appreciate not justifying him. it. I'm not justifying it. I'm just saying based on it. I will say, in Heart Center, we all expect Baze to beat Neji. But, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, let me ask Ron, who wins? Clouds win. And Chicken, who wins? Um, I'm going to say Dad, Le Dad Legend has been playing pretty hot lately. I mean, not the exact same team across Hero and Legacy, but they made a... a they made a pretty insane run uh, at the end of the regular season in Hero to qualify for playoffs. Um, started winning a lot when they picked up based in Legacy and have been winning ever since. So I think I'm going to pick Dad Legend for your THL, THL Season 23 Legacy Series champions. Wow. Yeah. wow. Lotus says, up. don't justify your, your pick. And <laughs> you just give a speech. Okay. <laughs> I did I did immediately forget. I hate it here. No, it's amazing. No, no, no we're going to keep this going. Some of us well, will. Uh, no, will no you can ignore. Usually, <laughs> it's, it's okay. okay. Usually it's like, oh, why do you think this? <laughs> and then I say, why I hate this. It's weird, this that, it's that, weird that the people who chose Dad Legend feel like they have to justify themselves. It's weird. There it okay. is. Okay. Let us let, let us talk. Okay. There let it us is. Cook. Even with the assignment, you know, hey, just pick a team. Don't justify it. You get picks for clowns. No justification. Yeah, it makes sense. You get picks for dad legend. But here, let me tell you why before you tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> All right. I don't know. I think we have a a very very balanced matchup. It'll be great. That's true. And diamond, who wins? Uh, the diamond. Oh shoot! I don't have my glasses on. No, the clown stories one. Sorry, I misread the team name. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, um, you can't justify. I just say it so if you feel like you don't want to, you don't need to. Oh, I, I, I would, I would love, love to love justify. 
simply uh, it's 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 half the team from last time that won. Surely they win it again, right? They wouldn't well, choke in the final. Ron. Yeah, they're missing no Ron, so we definitely win this time. I or mean, the... like <laughs> I choked in the finals and we won anyway. So now that you don't have me, it seems like way easier to win in the finals. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Joe, bring us back to the main screen because there's something everyone here came to see, and that is Diamond reading the commercial. So, Diamond, why don't you tell us about Twitch Prime? Uh, will do. Yo, 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 yo. Hey there, Twitch alicious viewers. Have you subscribed to Team Hearth Fatigue? Bet then Mako today, the day to big all league. EU yourself and subscribe to our flannel. This scrub scription enables the THL team to well cover the scariest most losses of Copeda berating our dab site as well as improve the quality of our clowns and rot tend to our hooers. If you have AP Amazon Prime slash Pitch Perfect Prime, you can sub scribble who the channel for free. Pog. Subscribers will get a THL emote bong as well as the THL chat badge. So smash the light, living daylight out of the that thumbs down button and keep the notifications bing bong to make sure early you don't catch our team bad chest bing live. We do not appreciate each and every one of you homies. A special note to our viewers, she'll out to thrill out THL's true social media disappoints of Batchest. Webkite team hearth legends dot the bomb slash for the culture slash I didn't ask. Catch us on Twister at th dash hell underscore hs. Join us on Discord at team Darth Vader League. Face us on Hearthstone at diamond22 hashtag one one three five seven. That's my file tags in here and sign to our dms on tinder team swipe right left or swipe right league the true hearth legend saku and father for 20 content who to roast all our videos on your next youtube yeah no and our true hearth legends himself ronald mctex mctex <laughs> continues it who is to post all our zero championship banners on our thl web bites just search for team hearth cope to see everything previously recorded but who asked you're enjoying our, us on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Team Hearth Legend, or losably on our YouTube channel in the future. And all and for all of you THL fans out there, there were some times THL shows were every single, um, most days of the week. You can't go krong tooping in at many time for some Hearth Copium related content. Now back to the Doom part. Good chow. Wow, that was awful. What did you guys do? <laughs> yeah, I, was, I think we've hit a, a new record. I got, I got you. you. Why is yeah, that final tag in here? <laughs> <When did that>? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that started this season. Uh, who will face you? Whoever face the us guest on is. Next. <laughs> who who going to battle? <laughs> uh. Yeah. Um, you know, we still have one more week. And if we are inviting the teams for next week, that's something I need to organize. But if we have the teams, maybe we'll have a special read like we had last time. With all the teams reading it at the same time, it's going to be so bad. Um, we'll figure something out. But I want to thank Diamond for our commercial. As we move on to our next series, unless Diamond wants to read the commercial again, is that what I'm hearing? What? <laughs> <laughs> Now <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> no, we only double once, and that's in the final show. So moving on to Bro, where we're going to start by taking a look at um, the match between Brushy Tuna and F12. Now, Ron, I know this is a match you don't want to talk much about, so tell us about it. Absolutely. So, um, you know... It uh it didn't go brushy tuna's way. Uh F2L came through and um they did it in a bunch of game fives. Uh we didn't have a single non-game five all the way through. Uh the order of play, I believe, was Lotus Knight played first against Itachi in the five, uh came down to the five game series and Itachi pulled it off. I think it was an evolve shaman that uh Got the, got the right, right evolves, evolves at the end that um, yeah, that wound up being the yeah it was a it was a mirror that's right and he high rolled early 
uh, you know, like like Shaman loves to do in Ridiculous Hats game against Rubobson. Uh For probably the first time, we didn't see game five evolve Shaman Hyrule. I think it came in game four instead or something. Um, but that one, of course, went down to five games and Rebob came out on top uh, in another close one. And then it came down to me versus Marty B. Um, it was it was looking a little rough for me early. I swung it back a little bit and we went into game five again. Uh, and Marty, with his Evolve Shaman, hit the spicy high roll early. Um, I think it was an 8-8 Wind Fury, uh, followed by a 12-12 over the course of a couple of turns. And uh, I did not have enough to deal with that. Marty got the dub. Uh, and then it came down to McBanter face and Pocket Train, needing essentially to win a combined 3-0, or like 6-0 or 6-1 in order for... Brushy Tuna to be able to advance, and in game four, I believe it was decided uh, where McBanterface lost, uh, tied it up at two to two. He went on to win the final game, which was irrelevant at that point um, because F2L had clinched enough points that we could not um, overcome them. So Pocket Train and Diamond did not have to play. Okay. Um... Now, Diamond, since you were on the other side, tell us, how did it go for you? Anything you yeah. want to add that we didn't say? I mean, honestly, I think it went perfectly fine. I didn't have to play pocket trade. A win's a win. <laughs> like, no, it was, um, it was nice to see the F12, the original F12 guys clutched it out. And then it was just down to me and Dabs, like, get two points. So I was like, okay, Dabs will go first. And if I need to get a point, I will get it. Because surely Dabs won't get swept. And then he got his two, and I was like, yippee. I, it was very interesting because I had an idea of what Pocket was going to bring, but I was like, hmm, I'm not going to bring the hard counter lined up because that sounds bad. So I'll bring Naga Priest because that seems interesting. And that, that's my only like insight, honestly. I was like, ooh, why don't I just bring Naga Priest into Mindlock? That seems okay. A lot because I already have a Vol Shaman too. And then, yeah, that was kind of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyone wants to add anything else about this match? You said, let me not bring the uh, the full counter lineup, and then you brought a full counter phylactery lineup. Okay. I mean, counter in quotes. I feel like Naga Priest is a deck. It's not like, I just mean like cope counter things. Like, I don't even know what, I, what that would be. Yeah. Um... Yeah, game five Shaman Mirror sounds very fun. That's also the final we had in in our trios tournament, I believe, uh, mm -hmm. which decided the whole tournament. So, <laughs> and it went great. the same way too. It was a great. super early high roll. Um, yeah, great meta we have on our happen. hands here. <laughs> here uh, no problems at all. This looks. Let's. Like I, will be, I will be. I will be playing my pro match after the patch. Hey, come on, check it. Don't you want to play with Noel costing ten? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I guess uh, I can. I'll be able to talk about more about what happened in my match last week in our in our next uh, in our next covered match because yeah, it was it was not fun. <laughs> yeah. Um. Any final thoughts anyone wants to share about this match? Before we move on to chicken is down just in time to clown bait. A perfect 10 Merlock. All right, so let's take a look at our other match of the night. We have Chicken is down, down just in time to clown, facing a perfect 10 Merlock. Chicken, tell us what happened. Yeah, this was uh, a very close one. Came came down to the last match of uh, Pui versus Chewy. I believe it was Lambie versus Yo Daddy playing first. Lambie has brought Boon Priest, I think, every sing every single week of Pro Series. Uh, he's basically like, yeah, I like Boon Priest. I'm going to bring it. It's fun. And then his opponents try to hard counter it. And then he wins anyways. Um, Yo Daddy did not try to hard counter it, and Lambie lost. Maybe that was the problem? <laughs> Uh, I think the, yeah, 
He ended up falling on the Boon Priest for the first time in like, I don't know, four weeks or something. It was, it was pretty crazy. But yeah, unfortunate start. And I think I played right after. Yeah, I did. Or I did play second. And you'll notice that I have Warrior. And, <laughs> and I had tried, uh -huh. I had tried the matchup versus Shaman a couple times uh, before submitting. And I was like, oh, this feels pretty good. Um, and then I submitted it, and then Corden had brought Wildpaw Cavern into Shaman, and then testing that afterwards really felt like it changed the matchup a lot. Uh, maybe even like swung it back into the Shaman's favor. Um, and then I was feeling not so great about the Warrior, and I practiced it a bunch more and kept losing on it. Uh, and then I played it in my match, and it lost twice. I thought um, I lost three times. Uh, no, oh wait, I think I lost... What else did I lose with? Warrior. I think I lost twice with Warrior and lost once with Shaman, maybe? Um... I think I lost the Shaman Mirror. Yeah, I did I did lose the Shaman Mirror. Yeah. Uh, I think Corden got, like, Thaddeus on turn two or three or something, and that was the end of it. And then I did it right back to him against Pure Paladin. Um, and then, yeah, I basically just needed to get one win with Warrior in two games, and I could not do it. But, yeah, that, I think, like, the Conquest meta is not super great right now. It feels like there's no good deck four. Um, as you can see, Corden brought Pure Paladin, which is a bad deck, and I brought Charge Warrior, a worse deck, arguably. Um, so yeah, it came down to who's... The fourth deck could be less terrible. And then, yeah, so then we were down two matches, feeling not so great. Um, and I think then Neji won his match, and then Justin won. So it was tied at 11. And then we were basically, like, all following, like, Pui's updates in his channel while he was playing his match, and then saw that he won 3-1, and I'm like, oh, hey, we didn't... <laughs> we we did not end up choking, and we are now in the final. Well, I choked, but uh, the rest of the team did great. So, um, yeah, it was it was pretty back and forth. I mean, really came right down to the last match on, on Sunday. So, yeah, can, um, yeah, we're happy to be going to the finals, and, yeah, it was a, a great match against APM. There. Um, Magic. Anything you want to add here? Um, yeah, it was very close. We we're getting a bit stressed being down 2-0 and having to win all three matches, but um, we ended up getting there. My match was interesting. Yeah, it was 2-2, and I had my Cope Priest versus the Pure Paladin, and my Cope Priest was like a 30-card Control Priest that me and Justin built and had Svalna in it. And my opponent played Pure Paladin, and they got Svalna off of their invitation. Um, and the game was like 35 minutes long. So that one was, <laughs> that one was not was too awesome. enjoyable, especially because Svalna was my bottom card, and I never drew it. Um, so yeah, it was more like Svalna Paladin versus svalna Lis Priest. Um, but yeah, managed to get the win in the end. And then, like Chicken said, Justin won, and then... We also won, so the reverse sweep. Love to see it. Oh yeah, I, oh, yeah, forgot, I forgot how close your match was too. That was that I was getting a bit worried at that one, especially because yeah, that priest deck is so bad. It's terrible, <laughs> it's so bad. I mean, yeah, it's I don't know. I think all the fourth decks in the meta right now are are terrible. Um, there are three classes. Um, I think this meta was, it's basically over. It's going to change in two days, and you know, it doesn't. But this was a pretty bad one. Um, especially, everything feels like a high roll, but any final comments anyone wants to share about this match before we go to talking about the finals? Okay, so I'm going to open the question by the finals. You can justify if you want. You don't need to. So, Chicken, who wins? 
the clowns will win, and I will not be explaining. Okay, and Neji, who wins? The clowns will win again. And Ron, who wins? Uh, let's let's make it a clean caster curse uh, for the clowns. So uh, maybe F2L can somehow break their championship curse. F2L, I don't think, has won since like season two of Pro. So I'm picking clowns, but uh, maybe? And I want to ask um, Diamond, who wins? Uh, here it comes. <laughs> I think F2L can do it. <laughs> I'm on the team, and so far, each team that I've played for in, like, my, in quotes, rookie season, because I'm concerned it's my rookie season in pro, I have won. So I think I will do it again. Also, I don't think the Clowns have won three in a row. No way. They could never. They could never. <laughs> but I Classic also... mistake, Diamond. You're supposed to cast a curse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think it's, like, definitely I would favor Clowns on paper, but it is five matches of Hearthstone that can occur, and there's variants as well. I don't know, I've been having a good time in F12. It's been nice to, like, play with dabs and like, again. And, like, collaborate. It's been a good time, so that's what I think. I, I like yeah, playing I like, on well. F2L, because I get to talk to the only non-F2L player on the team. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, I'm not taking anything back. I, I okay, now that I, I can get behind. <laughs> Hey, it's a six up meta and I got dabs on my team. Who who am I who am I gonna talk to, you know? <laughs> and finally, Geranium, who wins? Yeah. Um I mean, we just saw Chicken had a close match versus APM, squeaked by. Uh the clown team had another close match versus APM and squeaked by. Uh the clowns I know would have smashed those. So clowns are washed. And I think that uh, I think that F2L, off the back of beating Brushy Tuna, who many would have considered to be the uh, the uh, true final team, I think that's a, a huge uh, morale booster, and that will bring them the win. Fair, fair. Um, to those of you who said F2L, I will remind you that Rebob's check is in the mail. It arrives over the next few days, um, but that is just what he asked me to. That said, um, let's move back to the main screen where I have a final question for everyone. And no, we already talked nerfs, so I'm going to ask a checkout question that is a bit different. So my question is, rotation is happening in a month. I want you to name a card that you want to come to the core set. Um, and there's a bonus. You know the bonus if you want to answer. So I'm going to start with Neji. Neji, what do you want to see in the core set? And thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for being great host as always. Uh, I will choose to do the bonus as well. And I'm going to defy your bonus. There's uh, <laughs> something that we're not allowed to choose that we dread, but I'm going to pick it for something I want to return. <laughs> I want Mind Render Lucia to come back to standard. I would say three mana version and unnerfed. Not the two mana one, but yeah, the three mana one where you swap hands and then you like dump cards in their hand. That was like one of my favorite cards ever. It was super fun. I know most people hate it, but whatever. I like it. And I'll just add in Zephyrus for fun too, because that card's really fun and I like Highlander decks. Um, for card I would not want to see come back, let's... Mm, I'm not sure. Let's say Patches, because that card's dumb. I don't know if Pirates would be any good, but Patches is OP. Don't want to see it in Standard. There you go. Congratulations, Congrats. Neji. I've just banned you from THL. <laughs> <laughs> With your Alusha <laughs> pick. Alusha is the best card ever printed. Yep. I, sometimes I forget why I hate Neji. He does, he does such a good job of reminding me. Like It's just like clockwork. <laughs> True. He's so good at that. I love it here. <laughs> Keep it coming. Hope it up. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, Chicken, thank you so much for being here. Tell me what is a card you want back in the core set, and feel free to name a card you, dr you would dread to come back. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for having me as always. Uh, always a pleasure. A card. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to start with a card. I don't want to come back because that's what I have on in mind right now. And I'm also stealing it from Azalea Akari, which is brand. This card can, I mean, they've said they've all oh, brands also not going to stay in standard. Um, but my God, was, has this been a failed experiment? Why is this card in standard? Uh, it, like, it, it's just like, has broken so many, like so many cards that on their own would just be like, it's fine. Like these cards are good. Um, but with, with brand have just been uh, absurd. I also like the League, League of Explorers. Um, and I, I actually, League of Explorers is one of my favorite expansions of all time, I think. Um, like, I think more on the thematic side than anything. Like, I, I just really enjoyed, like, the the cinematic and, like, even all, like, the uh, kind of the the kind of Indiana Jones style and all, all that. But, yeah, this card... <laughs> this card is a serious offender. Like, from, like, the Nathrius to Astlor to like just so many other things. Um also really funny that like the final Astalor interaction with Bren is like technically bugged, but they just like left it in. Anyway, um that that's kinda weird. But whatever. Um but yeah like and then for a card I would want to come back into standard uh Hmm. I think maybe. Oh, I had a card in mind. What was it? Got to be a Mac Paladin card. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Wait. What if we just keep? <laughs> what if we just keep Lightforge carry or the 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 Carriel hero in? Oh wait. Bring back. Bring back all the Liberum cards. Okay. Now I figured it out. Oh, we've no. come. We've come full circle. Bring back yes. all the Liberum cards. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wait, guys, now we now we have actual card draw in a paladin deck. We have the Purator, and now we can play Librams in a deck that has draw. This is insane. Librams will be good again, I swear. New relics, please. Um, Geranium, thank you so much for being here. What do you want to come back slash not come back to the course of? Ah, uh, uh, thank you very much for having me. Um, I mean, Chicken said such a great answer. Neji, I actually, I wouldn't like to play with it, but man, I did love watching uh, just how well people could play with Lucio. so I think that would be interesting. However, the card that I want to come back to the core set, if Bran's leaving, well, then I want some jaws that bite and some claws that catch. Shutterwalk, I want to come back. It's just a fun card. I probably wouldn't even win games. Like, it might win games, like, in the fact that, you know, if you're facing a, some control deck, maybe you're able to get a bunch of battle cries off. However, uh, I think that um, on its own, it's not actually that powerful. So I think it would be a lot of fun to come back. And then the card that I would dread to see come back, real ones know that both Ram Shield should not come back. Hmm. If anyone, anyone has questions, questions, I can elaborate, but no, no, sir. Um, Ron, what do you think is a card that should come back? Uh, well, I'll also start with the bonus here and say a card I don't want to see come back is Shadow Step. I think Shadow Step has been too good for too long, and uh, I really want to see Jay Alexander have a meltdown when they rotate it, because uh, I think that'd be hilarious. Um, and as far as a card I want to see come back, Unleash the Hounds. Bring me back, my best <laughs> boys. I need Unleash the Hounds. It's not that good, I swear. It's just... Man, I love, I love them. They're amazing. <laughs> Give them back to me. I just want to ask you a question, Ron. As a, as a hunter specialist, did Shock Splitter need a nerf without Brent? <laughs> Obviously not. They should have left it at two. <laughs> mm. I mean, at three. At three. 
Finish. Listen, I, I think I think it was fine to leave it at three. At first, I thought, oh, you know what? This deck might actually need a nerf um, because, you know, it can actually somewhat compete with Demon Hunter and Rogue. But they knew that the mini set was coming. They knew that the location was coming out and they murdered Hunter uh, before it even had a chance to keep up with the nonsense that's going on. Shocksmitter Hunter could actually somewhat compete. It still probably lose, but it, it wouldn't be that bad. Um, if Spitter was still at three, but they made it four instead. Honestly, like, what if they had just rotated Bran like a month ago or something? That'd have been. I, I feel like that could have solved a lot of problems. Yeah, yeah. probably would have. We'd we'd have a much better meta without Bran. Um, or rotated Bran uh, like eight months ago. Just because, well, like, I... they they had to nerf other things because of Bran. Like, it's. It's kind yeah. of the same problem as the um, prep and shadow step problem in Rogue that like other cards get hit because those cards are limiting design space. Brand limits design space and just shouldn't exist right now. But, you know, he'll probably rotate and not stay in court. And finally, Diamond. Tell me, um, what do you think is going to be um, a? Um, what do you think is a card that should come back to the core set and one that shouldn't? Sure, I think I'd like to see Mechathune. I think Mechathune was a card I didn't get to play much with when it was in standard. It seems cool, and I like OTK decks. And then I want Radiant Elemental gone. Banish to the shadow realm where it is in wild. <laughs> Enough's enough. Fair, yeah. fair. Yeah. Um, come tell us if we got stuff right, if we got stuff wrong once we figure out the new core set. But with that, I want to wish all our viewers a good night. I want to thank our host, Super Chicken, Geranium Battle, Neji Boston, Diamond, and Ron Mexico for being here with me tonight. We are going to have a special show next week talking about the finals. If you are playing in the finals, let us know and have fun. And I hope to see you here, if you're playing in the finals, for our interview show next week. Um, we will try to get all teams and figure out, oh, I'm going to have a problem scheduling, but we're going to figure out how to put three interviews in a single show because that's how we work here. Um, with that, have a great night, everyone, and we'll see you later. Night, everyone. See you. Peace.